This video will be the first video of a brand new series on the development of the next version of the automated AccuSlice system. This next version will be larger, stronger, and more rigid, and will be more versatile to enable the slicing of longer and heavier boards on the AccuSlice system. The system will also be designed to mount on bandsaws with three quarter inch miter bar slots, such as this Laguna bandsaw, but also be adapted to the Felder and Hammer bandsaws, which have metric miter bar slots. This is the automated AccuSlice system that we designed, built, and tested in a previous video series. I've been using this system for about six months for cutting a variety of boards, both long boards and a lot of segmented uh, discs from projects I've been working on. However, after using this system for the past few months, I'm ready to go on to design the next version of this system to improve its performance. The system actually did work quite well. I was able to slice boards up to 30 inches long with an accuracy of plus or minus two thousandths of an inch over the entire length of the boards. This accuracy was repeated when cutting multiple boards with this system. I also cut a lot of segmented disc for projects that I was working on. However, in, in doing the testing, uh, several problems did arise, and as a result, I'm ready to go on to design the next version of the system to improve the performance. When we slice longer and heavier boards, we start to see less accurate cuts. For example, when slicing a 40 inch long board, we saw an error of plus or minus four thousandths of an inch over the entire length of the boards. We attribute this error due to the rigidity of the AccuSlice frame and the indexing of the boards using a single indexing system in the middle of the index table. When long and heavier boards are placed on the table, there's a lot of excess weight on this left side of the table, which caused the frame to begin to twist as the boards were moved through the rail and pushed through the bandsaw blade. At the end of the cut, the excess weight was now on the opposite end of the table. We felt that what's needed is a stronger frame for this automated AccuSlice system to enable the slicing of longer and heavier boards. Also having the single indexing system in the center of the frame did not give enough support to the frame to control the twisting of the frame. If we use two indexers, one in each end of the index table, we could further eliminate the possibility of the twisting and alignment of the board as it was moving through the entire length of the board as it was being sliced. This would also provide for more accurate slicing of the boards using this automated AccuSlice system. The second problem occurred when I was slicing a large number of thin segmented discs for some segmented rings for some of my projects. Every now and then, one of the slices would be slightly undersized by a small amount, you know, maybe as much as only two thousandths of an inch. I attribute this error to the fact that the stepper motor used for this indexer did not have any feedback and therefore probably missed a step resulting in this error. So a stepper motor with feedback, or preferably a servo motor with feedback, will be needed for this new systems. Finally, I see the need to once again revise the software that was used to control the system. After spending the past several months developing my CNC mill and using the mill software, I see a number of improvements that could be made to the automated AccuSlice system software. This will include a better display system, possibly a touchpad screen, and minimize the number of buttons and lights that are used to control the panel. In addition, features such as a homing switch would be an improvement to the system. So now let's go over to the other area of my shop where I'm working on two prototypes for this next version of the automated AccuSlice system. I've already started to assemble the parts to make the initial prototypes for this automated AccuSlice system. I'm actually making two prototypes. This first version will be uh, 36 inches long and the second version is 48 inches long. I'm actually making the second larger version for a customer who wants to fit this to a Felder model FB610 bandsaw, which is a much larger bandsaw. Both these prototypes will use larger and thicker plates. The standard plates on our standard AccuSlice system are 26 inches long and are constructed from quarter inch thick aluminum plate. These plates are, of course, larger and wider. This front plate is eight inches wide. This uh, front plate here is uh, four inches wide and they're made from 3 8 inch thick aluminum plates, so they're quite a bit you know, larger, heavier, and stronger than our standard AccuSlice system. The guide bars on these new automated AccuSlice systems are constructed from a 16 millimeter bar. Our standard Accu AccuSlice system uses 12 millimeter bar. As a result, these bars are much heavier and stronger than our standard system. In addition, the linear bearings are much larger and stronger than our standard system and ride very smoothly on the guide bars. In fact, you can see how this plate, how smooth that's gonna run on our system. 
much smoother than our standard AccuSlice system, which should give, again, nice smooth performance uh, when I'm slicing boards. The standard front bar is constructed from a 7 8 inch square aluminum bar. Our standard front bar in the AccuSlice system is 5 8 diameter rod. So again, this larger bar, which is square, will give additional stability to the system. So all these changes of design include the larger, thicker plates, the larger guide bars, the larger linear bearings, and this front bar will all contribute to provide for substantial improvement in the rigidity and stability of the frame for this new automated AccuSlice system. To test out these new larger guide bars and linear bearings, I decided to make a prototype using our standard AccuSlice index plates. So this is our standard AS266 front and back plates. And I just mounted it to uh, some of these 16 millimeter bars with the linear bearings. And the system is uh, noticeably stronger than our standard system. I did this for two reasons. Number one, to uh, check out the improved rigidity using these new components, but also to start to design the other components because I need to design you know, plates back here or to mount my miter bar and also design a mounting system or a locking system to lock the uh, front plate to the uh, guide bar. So it was initial design uh, to make these parts, which I'll be changing uh, with this next version. This is a quick short video on the testing that we performed on this new modified AccuSlice system using the larger 16 millimeter guide bars and linear bearings. The system was definitely much more rigid and was able to slice very accurately. The other major change of design is the addition of two indexing systems to the automatic AccuSlice frame, one on each end of the frame. One of the problems we encountered with the previous models occur when slicing long and heavy boards. When slicing boards less than 30 inches long, we saw an area of less than 2,000 inch in, in thickness variation along the entire length of the boards. However, with boards over 30 inches long, we saw increased variation in this uh, accuracy. We perceive this area to be due, first of all, to the rigidity of the AccuSlice frame, but also to the use of a single indexer in the center of the table. By using these two indexing units, one on each end, and with a more rigid frame, as I just described, I believe the accuracy system will greatly improve and enable the slicing of much longer bores. These two indexers will need to be moved or indexed at the same rate and time to assure accurate movement of the boards being sliced. We hope to be able to slice boards at least 50 inches long and hopefully even longer with these new systems. I'll be designing a number of miter bars for use with these systems. This first unit will initially have a miter bar which is 3 quarter inch wide which will fit my Laguna band saws and other standard American uh, type bandsaws. However, I have a Hammer Model 4400 bandsaw in order, so I plan on making a miter bar to adapt this 36 inch version to that bandsaw. This requires a different miter bar since the miter bar on the Hammer bandsaw is only 15 millimeter wide. I decided to purchase the Hammer bandsaw for a number of reasons. We've had numerous requests from customers over the years to install the AccuSlice system on the Hammer and Felder bandsaws but both these manufacturers use a 15 millimeter wide metric size miter bars on their band saws, and our standard AccuSlice system will not fit that miter bar. So our plan is to produce future models of the AccuSlice system to fit both the Hammer and Felder line of band saws. In addition, the Hammer band saw is about twice the weight of my Laguna band saw, and it may be better suited for use with this new automated AccuSlice system. But we'll be testing both the Laguna and the uh, Hammer band saws using this automated AccuSlice system. As mentioned previously, we plan on using two indexing systems for this next version of the automated AccuSlice system, one on each end of the table. However, instead of using stepper motors, we plan on using DMM servo motors with feedback circuits. With the previous version of the automated AccuSlice system, we occasionally cut a board that was slightly different in thickness from the other boards when we were cutting multiple boards. This occurred when we were sequentially slicing 20 or 30 cuts from a single disc actually very infrequently. I attribute this error due to the possibility of the stepper motors occasionally missing a step since there was no feedback circuit in these motors. Using these servo motors and circuits with feedback so this missing step will be eliminated. The servo motors are more expensive but I think the improvement in accuracy will be worth the investment. In addition these servo motors will be much stronger which is important when moving heavier and larger boards. We also plan on using a third DMM servo motor for the linear travel of the system. For the ball screws for linear travel of the carriage, I plan on using this 1,000 millimeter ball screw on the 36 inch automated AccuSlice system. 
I also have on order a 1500 millimeter closed ball screw for the 48 inch long system. This longer ball screw used in conjunction with a longer rail will permit slicing of even longer boards. The ball screw in this 1500 millimeter model is covered to prevent any sawdust from collecting on the ball screw. We did not see a significant problem with this in the previous versions of the automated AccuSlice system, but we felt that if the ball screw can be kept cleaner, we should use this covered ball screw. <clears throat> I ordered it two months ago and I'm still waiting for delivery. I have not tested this new ball screw yet, so our plans could change after we see it being tested. There will also be quite a few changes in the electronics. As you can see the two cabinets in the background, these are larger cabinets with a slanted top. All the electronics will go inside these boxes. The electronics will change quite a bit. I'm planning on using a touchscreen display on both of these units. This is the display panel which will mount on the slanted top on these boxes. The display panel will eliminate many of the buttons and lights on the previous model. The larger display panel will also provide for a screen to display the actual position of the indexer and board position and display the actions being conducted when slicing the boards. However, the display panel will require a lot of programming, which will take me quite a while. In fact, I anticipate I'll probably spend more time programming the system than actually building the basic automated AccuSlice system. I anticipate there may be additional software changes and new functions added as I begin to design and program this system. So that pretty much describes what we are planning for the next version of the automated AccuSlice system. The design may change as we continue to develop these two units. I've already started machining some of the parts for this new automated AccuSlice system. I just finished machining the front bars and now I'll be starting on the blocks which will be used to mount the uh, miter bar to the rails on this system. These blocks require quite a bit of machining. This is the basic block I'm starting with. And this is my final design that I'll be making for the system. It consists of a square block with a hole for the uh, guide bar and then a, a dado here which will enable the miter bar to be attached to this block. And again these blocks will have various models of these blocks for different size miter bars. This is a block I made for the prototype manual AccuSlice system where the miter bar goes into this block. It's a square block with a dado cut in and I, I drilled a second hole in the miter bar so the two screws mount the miter bar to this block. At this front end of the system I need to make an additional block which will be these smaller blocks to enable the this front plate to lock to the guide bars. And again I have two ideas for this. I made a prototype in my initial design with the manual system but uh, that can be improved. So I have two designs I'll be testing using a, a hole with a slot that I can use a, a, a clamp to clamp the two together to tighten it. So I'll be trying both these. I'm not sure which one I'm going to be using yet, be using yet but uh, one, of these, one of these two designs will be used for the uh, final prototypes. So again, quite a bit of machining needs to be done on both of those components. The next step is to mount these front and back plates to the linear bearings. And this will be shown in the next video in this series. I need to drill holes with and counter bores on each end of the plates. At the same time, I need to machine holes for the AccuSlice rails and also the ball screw. Additional machining will be needed to be done for the electromagnets and other parts of the system. And once again, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Uh, this is a very ambitious project I'll be working on, and I anticipate that I'll be spending probably the rest of 2022 uh, completing this project, uh, mainly because I'm doing everything myself. I'm doing the design, I'm doing the manufacturing. I'm doing the electronics assembly and I'm doing the software development. So it's a lot of different projects I need to complete and it'll take me some time, especially the programming will take me a lot of time. So again, thank you for watching this video. If you do have any questions or comments or suggestions to improve the system or additional ideas uh, to make the system work better or do something different, you know, please give me a call or drop, it, drop me an email. I'm always happy to talk to you and we're always looking for ways to improve our products. So again, thank you. I'm just adding some additional video showing the drilling of the 16 millimeter holes in the front bar for the automated AccuSlice system. But in order to make this, since this is 48 inches long and my case for my AccuSlice, for my uh, mill is only uh, six foot long, I had to cut a window in the side to enable the bars to go through. So this is a window that you know, put back on, just close it off, but open it up when I need it for cutting these longer pieces. So let me start by 
cutting the holes for the uh, guide bars for the AccuSlice system. And the guide bars are 16 millimeter diameter, so I'll be drilling holes 16 millimeters in diameter. I'm doing multiple steps. First of all, using the center drill, and then using uh, probably like a half inch drill, going to 5 eighths, and then uh, using a, a boring tool to get it nice and true. So let me start milling this. For the first step, I'm using a center drill to mark the location for the holes to be drilled. Then I went to a 3 8 inch drill and drilled a hole the whole way through the bar. I'm using what's known as pecking to uh, drill these holes so it doesn't uh, clog the drill bit. All the video of drilling these holes is shown at five times the actual drilling speed. Again, just for viewing purposes. The next drill is a half inch drill to enlarge the hole even further. Again, using the same pecking technique to drill the hole. The final drill is a 5 8 inch drill to enlarge the hole to 5 8 of an inch, which is slightly smaller than the 16 millimeter required for the uh, guide bar. Finally, to get the hole to the exact dimension required, I'm using a 16 millimeter boring tool. And this is the finished 16 millimeter hole that's been cut in the bar. And then I repeat the process on the other side of the bar.